What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist for Stochastic here on the Odd Shopper channel, coming to you with another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. First of all, hit that like button, subscribe button, and notification bell. All of that goes a long way for us over here at the Odd Shopper channel, as well as gives you the best content in the sports betting space at your disposal every single time that it comes out. Uh, but most importantly, we'll get to the BetMGM side of this thing as well. I want you guys to take advantage of that offer. We'll get to that in a little bit, but it is right off the bat time to get into the picks. Let's ride. All right, fam, to get the day going, we've got a standalone game here with the Tigers and the Royals playing the first of their doubleheader set at 2.10 p.m. Eastern time. It's two really, really tough pitchers to back on the mound here in Michael Pineda for Detroit and Brad Keller here for the Royals. And since I started doing this video series, one team and one team alone has owned my soul. And that is, of all teams, the Detroit Tigers. I mean, I kept betting them against, uh, I don't know, the Guardians. Just swept them. No big deal. They won two of their first four against the White Sox. Uh, that was not great. But fortunately, I got back on the right side of this awful baseball team by doubling down over the weekend. And they were properly punished. 8 nothing and 4-2 on Saturday and Sunday to finally cash the minus one and a half run lines on the opposite side. And wouldn't you know it, I'm going to be firing that minus one and a half right away here in the AM out on the West Coast because... Michael Pineda is horrendous at this stage of his career. He doesn't miss bats. He's got a 13.2% K rate, a 45.3% hard hit rate, and a 602 expected slugging. Those are all amongst the league worst marks for starters. But best of all, his 3.62 ERA might look decent on the surface, but compared to his 6.34 expected ERA that is in the bottom 1% of all pitchers in baseball, he might not be properly allocated for how bad he actually is. So as bad as Brad Keller's been on the other side, I don't care because Pineda has flat out been lucky and he will absolutely get shelled sooner rather than later. So let's get the monkey off our back once again and cash one during the weekdays here. Royals minus one and a half run line. Lock it in to start the day. Yes, KC minus one and a half lock button. All right, we go from talking Brad Keller to Mitch Keller where the first thing I did was look up if they were related. And fun fact, they aren't. Anyways, we've got Keller and the Pirates taking on Trevor Rogers and the Marlins in this one. And while neither team is good, one of these lineups is exponentially more interesting at the moment to me. And that would surprisingly be the Pittsburgh Pirates side, who just hung up eight on the Brew Crew on Sunday. As bad as Keller's been for the season, this Marlins lineup without Jazz Chisholm and without Jorge Soler is brutal beyond brutal. Check this out. Over the past three weeks, they're well below a league average offense versus right-handed pitching with just an 83 WRC plus. And with zero batters currently healthy on their roster that exceed a 515 expected slugging on the air, power should be suppressed. So add in a phenomenal ballpark to pitch in, so long as that roof is closed in Miami, which 99% of the time it is in the summer, I'm looking to take the plus money with the Pirates and their improved lineup of late. Not a lock button as Trevor Rogers has decent power suppression himself with a 32.1% hard hit rate, but I certainly still think he's gettable. Pittsburgh money line, the value's there. I like it. Hey guys, as good as these picks might be from time to time, and I must say, there's a lot of time and effort that's put in here. I think we're making some money here over the course of the next couple of weeks, but you can guarantee yourself a profit right now by signing up over at BetMGM. The link is in the video description box below. You simply bet $10 on any money line whatsoever on the entire slate, and you will get $200 free dollars. It doesn't get easier than that. It doesn't get better than that. That is free ammunition to fire on anything that I recommend in these videos, anything else that's on the Odd Shopper channel. If it's not baseball, you could bet in golf on the Open Championship this week. Whatever tickles your fancy, you have the opportunity to go bet it simply by betting $10 on the money line over at BetMGM, signing up in the video description box below and get that $200 free dollars of ammunition. Enjoy that, my friends. Now, back to the picks. All righty, next up, we got the Red Sox and the Tampa Bay Rays here, and I'm looking at Brian ba uh, Brian Bayo versus Josh Fleming. He's assumed to be the starter here, I think. Um, I just saw that he was recalled by AAA Durham, which means usually he's going to be put into service right off the bat. So whether, he, whether or not he's the starter, he's going to probably be the main pitcher since he's the guy who started out. Uh, they've had Whistler. They've had other guys come in, pitch that one inning stint as an opener, but just be on the lookout. Josh Fleming should be the guy here, but he's not the main pitcher of interest to talk about. It is without a doubt, Brian Bayo, because last time around this time, I was so excited to back this dude in his MLB debut. 
and he did not do so good. Four innings pitched, four earned runs with three free passes and just two strikeouts. Ironically enough, he'll be facing this exact same race squad that somehow got swept at the hands of the Reds in Cincinnati over the weekend. That's not good. And for round two here, there's no way that I'm not going to back Bayo so long as this line isn't egregiously in favor of the Red Sox when it opens. So be on the lookout for it here. But because we have to wait on this line, it gets auto lean status play. But I want to let it be known that due to Bayo's electric stuff in the minors that saw him north of a 30% strikeout rate at both AA and AAA, there's a sizable ballpark shift here as well, going from Fenway to the Trop. I'm absolutely going to be taking the Red Sox money line here later, depending what that value looks like. Uh, if it's better than, you know, if it's beyond minus 160, I probably am not going that direction. But inside of minus 160, Red Sox money line will certainly be a play for Bayo's second start. That's simply a lean as it stands right now. Next up, White Sox and the Guardians here. We're now five starts into Lance Lynn's season, and it's hard to be all that enthusiastic by anything that we've seen. The velocity on his fastball is down two miles per hour over his 2021 season, which helps explain his 5.33 ERA and lack of strikeout stuff. Just one good outing there in San Francisco, eight strikeouts, everything else, four of five, five or less. So be on the lookout for that. Oh, but he's facing a Guardians team on the road that doesn't really strike out ever. They avoid strikeouts at the highest rate in baseball. So I'm really not optimistic about Lance, uh, Lance Lynn's chances here. As far as the White Sox lineup goes, they continue to be elite against left-handed pitching, but horrendous against righties with just a 113 ISO versus that handedness. That is the second worst mark in baseball. And that's a key stat for me versus Cal Quantrill of late, as he surrendered eight long balls in his past six starts. Still, there's a massive nine total here for a reason, and it's that either pitcher is expected to do all that much in this spot. It's pretty hard to back anything here whatsoever after digging through it, but if forced to do anything, it's a lean on the Guardians money line here. That is a lean on the Guardians money line. This is a rather fun one to comb through here as Aaron Nola takes the mound for the Phillies and Miles Michaelis on the other side for the Cardinals, two very solid big league pitchers, and they're squaring off against some potent offenses on both sides. And I keep saying this, but for good reason. This Phillies offense has found something with young lefty Derek Hall, a pure DHer who's now slashing 289, 308, 684 with a 391 X Woba and four homers in just 39 plate attempts at the big league level. I mean, if Harper can get back healthy before the end of the season, this Phillies lineup is going to be a true nightmare to face for right handed pitching. But, anyways, we're not worried about that. We're worried about today. And these pitchers do look insanely good on paper, which is why we're looking at a pick them in this spot. Aaron Nola is a little bit better, of course, because, you know, he misses bats to a 27.8% K rate. But Michaelis just goes about his business. He never really beats himself from a walks perspective, and he doesn't get absolutely slaughtered against lefties like some other softer tossing righties might with a sub 20% K percentage, just like he has. In fact, He's holding lefties to a 221 average and a 1.01 whip on the year. So he's equipped to handle a lot of these Phillies. Even if one of them's able to be Kyle Schwarber in his current NBA jam, he's on fire state, something like that. That wasn't a good bit. I apologize, but we're here. It's interesting. And this is why it's really interesting to me looking at this game. It's going to be 98 degrees with 50% humidity in St. Louis tomorrow. Which means I don't care that these two pitchers are elite. I don't care that they're very good at run avoidance. I don't care that they have sub-3-2 ERAs. 7.5 is a low damn total with power bats like Schwerber, Cassianos, Hoskins, Hall on the Philly side. And then for the Cardinals, Goldschmidt, Arenado, Gorman, uh, Yepes, all of those guys at the dish for the cards. So I know I've taken you on a ride with analysis here, but this pick is certainly weather-related because boy, oh boy, Runs could be scored above expectation in this game environment. And again, I respect these pitchers, but hard not to like over seven and a half runs in this fire pit that is St. Louis on Monday. And hey, if you live there, please don't forget to drink tons of water tomorrow. Let's start here with this one. We got the Mets. We got the Braves in Atlanta here. And Max Scherzer, his first game back was damn near ridiculous. It was laughable, actually, to watch against the Reds in Cincinnati he had 11 strikeouts in just 79 pitches with 15 swinging strikes, zero earned, six innings. Yeah, Mad Max is back. But the Reds are as inept as it gets, and the Braves are very dangerous, just 
kind of my way of saying, yep, the Braves are very, very dangerous for any right-handed pitcher whatsoever, even if it's Mad Max. In fact, Atlanta's second best in the majors versus that handedness with a 193 ISO as they supply power at every single spot in the order one through nine. Also, the Braves have far from a gas can on the on the mound on the other side. It's Max Freed taking the bump. And he does everything Mad Max does in terms of limiting hard contact, even though there's no way you're going to compare the two uh, in terms of strikeouts as Max mows down an exponentially higher clip of batters. But still, the big thing here is I absolutely 100% do not expect Starling Marte to appear in the lineup for the Metropolitans today. And that is a massive downgrade for them, no matter who takes his spot. So it's really crazy to say this next part out loud. But I'll be backing the Braves at minus money against Scherzer as well as taking an under. So there you go. They're both alike for me. So consider this my parlay of the day or whatever else you want to call this. But I like Atlanta. I like the under of seven and a half. That's alike for both plays in this one. We haven't had a lock in quite some time. But finally, we've made it to a poo-poo platter of pitching that is certainly going to get a like button out of a play in this game. It's Adrian Martinez of the A's versus Spencer Howard of the Rangers. Actually, no, it just changed. It's going to be Glenn Otto on the bump here. Correction. You know what? We'll do this live. F it. We'll do it live. Do I think either offense is great here with Texas and their 92 WRC plus versus righties and Oakland's somehow worse 71 WRC plus? No, they're not good. They're bad offenses. But both of these pitchers, yes, even Glenn Otto here, they defy logic with their atrociousness. Uh, let's go with Otto first. He's got a 386 ex-woka, ex-woba, and that is very bad. It's so bad, even a caveman could do it. He misses zero bats with a 17.8% strikeout rate, and his 14.2% walk rate is worst on this staff and would be damn near the worst of any staff in baseball. And Adrian Martinez, somehow, some way, is even worse than that. A 388 ex Woba, despite only a 3% walk rate. And that makes absolutely no damn sense to me because it's, you know, means you're probably surrendering 927 hits per game because, you know, no walks, but give or take. Don't quote me on that. So, yes, nine runs is a lot for Globe Life Field, a middle of the road neutral park for scoring. But these starters sure do warrant this total. So, lock button. For the second time today, yes, lock button over nine runs in this Texas and Oakland spot. Part two, the sequel. It's got equally as off, uh, awful pitching as we had in game one of this doubleheader. But in game two, uh, everything I said earlier about the Tigers still applies as I can't seem to beat this team when I bet against them. So, hey, I just won't bet against them. I'm going to be taking a total here later on and Shouldn't be too hard to figure out where I want to go because Daniel Lynch on the bump on the other side of this one, who hasn't had a start since June 22nd due to a blister, isn't an inspiring pitcher to have on the mound and try to win a bet here. 45.3% hard hit rate, a 456 expected slugging, all of that ain't it. And just like what I talked about with St. Louis, this game is supposed to have a brutal high 90s heat and humidity spot. Oh boy, I expect runs. So with Alex Fado on the other side of the mound here uh, for Detroit, Kansas City's going to have plenty of chances to put up runs of their own. He's given up tons of power. A 5'11 expected slugging strikes out just 18.2% of batters, and he's giving up too many free passes. So don't forget what I said about double headers before in the last couple videos. Pay very careful attention to how the lineups come out the second time around, as making a bet as soon as one team's lineup drops and they're missing two, maybe three key bats for game two. That's a massive edge to go out and grab that from a betting perspective but I can't sit here and predict that right now. So I'm not going to be trying. So I'm looking at offenses, period, as it stands right now, unless something really ridiculous shows up in terms of either one of these bats, like you get Whit Merrifield, Benintendi, uh, maybe Dozier, and, and Vinny Pesquito. Like all these guys, uh, if, if they're sitting out here on the second half of this one, this is probably a stay away. But as it stands, if you get anything close to normal lineups in this one, over nine runs, I simply like it here. Uh, neither pitcher warrants any backing, but the over sure does. All right, I'm excited about this one. This is the very first course slate we've had since doing Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. And of course, it's always a hot button topic for DFSers and sports bettors alike. So even really good pitchers get lit up in the unfriendly confines of Coors Field, which means Sean Manaya had better be on his game in this one. For a little more context, let's just kind of dive into the Rockies' home road splits. So on the road, the Rockies sport just a 131 ISO versus Southpaws, even though their 105 WRC plus is still very serviceable. But at home, those numbers go way up. 
a 192 ISO, a 119 WRC+. plus. These are elite kind of numbers. You should expect offenses in bulk, to, or you should be expecting runs in bulk from the offensive side, especially with lefties on the mound going up against Colorado as opposed to righties. But with Nody lefty killer Chris Bryant back in action, I do understand why this total sits at 11 and a half. However, there is no way. I will not let a chance to bet against Jose Urania go by the wayside. The man has been getting torched his entire big big league career, most recently in Detroit. He had four relief appearances earlier this season. I don't even really care about that. But he inexplicably joined this rotation and pitched six and two-thirds against the Dodgers, giving up just one run. That has to be one of the biggest outlier performances I can remember in recent history. But this is Coors Field. And this is where Enya's terribleness should shine Heck, even in just the five appearances he's had this season and 14 and a third innings, he's carrying a 6.18. So yeah, 6.18 expected ERA, despite an actual 2.51 ERA. That is why we are uh, backing the Padres on the road in this one. And that is why we are backing them in run line fashion. Yes, San Diego, minus one and a half. I like it here in Coors. All right, folks, last game of the night. It pits Merrill Kelly of the Diamondbacks against the still very, very unlucky Alex Cobb. Cobb somehow got beat down by Arizona his last time out despite 15 ground balls to just two fly balls. He's averaging under zero. It's negative 2.4 degrees of launch angle per outing. Ridiculous kind of numbers. I don't know what to make of this madness at this point because there's something going on, but I still want to buy into his stat cast data and believe he's going to see better results soon. But at minus 160, where this line currently sits, and facing a Diamondbacks pitcher I like for real-life purposes in Merrill Kelly, this is a really hard sell for me to get into either side of the money line on this one. But an eight-run total in San Francisco and two pitchers that I still believe in, regardless of any kind of hard contact, any kind of issues that have randomly showed up for Alex Cobb, I'm taking the under on eight. Eight should not be hung up in San Francisco here. I like it on the under in this one. That's what we're going to do. A small, small play on the under. Hopefully we can sit back, relax, and enjoy a winner to finish off the night. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of my plays. If there's any plays that you're on, what you're interested in betting here for Monday. I'm looking forward to this slate. And I also hope you guys surely check out that BetMGM offer. We haven't ran anything this good ever. Bet $10 on any of the Moneyline plays. Get $200 free dollars into play immediately. Let's get out of here. I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets tonight.